the next treatment that we have to discuss here under this hazardous waste treatment method that is the thermal treatment physical treatment we have completed the chemical treatment we have completed next is the thermal treatment there are final disposal techniques that we have to discuss here that is the incineration very first method the incineration what are the incineration incineration is the process which is taking place in the incinerators and this is a very simple burning process where the burning of the material takes place at very very high temperature up to the 1000 degree celsius so this is what this is some burning or combustion of the waste at very high temperature 1000 degree celsius very important thing here is the in the presence of oxygen i have already told you in the previous chapter as well if you are burning the materials at a very high temperature in the absence of oxygen so that is not incineration that is pyrolysis so pyrolysis is combustion of waste or chemical decomposition at high temperature in the absence of o2 so we have seen one question asked from this particular section as well so that we were discussing in the pollution and we have already completed that there so here this incineration is the incineration or combustion at very high temperature at the presence of oxygen the presence of oxygen is very important here it is the most effective method but not clean method why because it emit the chlorine the compounds in the environment it emit the ozone in the environment and the remaining material as is very harmful also that is generated in the incinerators so but still we use it because of the bio medical waste generated those are very very infectious and harmful so to just uh, for the safety of the human beings the incinerators are also used or still in use other gases which is created in the incinerators are the dioxin and furon these are the very very poisonous gas we have already seen these two things in the water pollution chapter also so the dioxin and furon are created here this takes place at high temperature from burning of the chlorinated compounds and this is very harmful metals nox sox etc can also be released in the ash content or in the gaseous content incineration waste as is also hazardous and dumped into secured land fills so that ash is generated here that ash should be decomposed in the land fills only otherwise it is very very harmful and it can create another problem in the environment so that is about the incineration and pyrolysis so that is under the thermal treatment other treatment methods to reduce the mobility of the contaminants that you can use that is the very first thing is the solidification so solidification is a process in which materials are added to the waste like additives to produce solid this creates building between bonding between the toxic contaminants and the additives so for contaminated solutions corrosive liquid or solid sludge such method is used so here you have to add a additive here that additive will bind the toxic material or the wastage material on the uh, particular thing that wastage and ultimately you are purifying the whole solid waste here that is a kind of solidification method then we have the stabilization method so waste is converted into more chemically stable form then previous form so for example waste is converted or transformed from the toxic form to non toxic form that we have already seen the chromium 6 plus is converted into chromium 3 plus it doesn't mean that the whole purification is completed here this is a kind of stabilization process only this is also possible that the chromium 3 plus somehow converted into chromium 6 plus again in the environment and the same problem would be there so you have to remove all the chromium so here but the toxic form is for now being converted into non toxic form so that is a big relief and this is the case of stabilization so i hope all the treatments different treatments methods are very very clear to you so these all were the treatment methods that we have completed already now the next thing that we have to discuss here is the length so i hope you all know what is the landfill so in the landfill we have such a kind of packed situation where the wastage material are generally decomposed and packed and here the decomposition takes place so here landfills are again divided on the packing quality basis of the packing quality of the material here in two types one is called as the unsecured landfills another one is called as the secured landfills in unsecured landfills there is no security provision are provided for example 
there must be a layer of clay at least in the lower side of here which is a kind of impermeable or low permeable for the leachate which is created here leachate is the waste water so here you can see in this particular place from the upper layer the rain water will percolated this rain water will take the contaminants with it and it will again go down cross the layer and go to the ground water and the ground water can be contaminated but here in this unsecured landfills at least the low permeable layer of the clay material should be provided although this is not completely impermeable but it will somehow protect the ground water then the clay or soil must have sufficient cation exchange capacity so that it can absorb the metallic cations present here so suppose that water which is coming from this waste material when it is crossing this clay so is at this point this clay is having good cec cation exchange capacity so it will absorb all the toxic material into it and it will stop that material to go to the ground water the top soil must be relatively impermeable and should be able to support vegetation cover here so that is the thing about the top soil layer the top should be in curved shape here you can see so the water is not deposited here the all water which is coming from the rain will just go away to the outside of this landfill so that should be in dome shaped or curved shape at least and here the pipes are you can see the pipes are provided there to just take away the gases which is created here so that is another thing about this unsecured landfill now let's see the secured landfills and how they are secured so here you can see the formation of secured landfills in this secured landfills what do you have you have a one central pipeline which is having the methane gas recovery system that gas which is coming out from this particular place is used to generate energy or maybe cooking purpose or maybe anything else you have good amount of vegetation here on the top of the soil and there must be a layer of bentonite clay what is the bentonite clay bentonite clay is a type of clay which is having zero permeability so once the water is entered here that cannot cross this block layer which is made up of this bentonite clay so this bentonite clay is very effective that's why this is secured landfill there is no chances of contaminate the aquifer or the ground water here and this is also called as sanitary landfills so here we have another tube well you can see here this tube well is continuously monitored so there should be no mixing of any kind of contaminant in the ground water if any contaminant is uh, just mixed there immediately you have to remove the landfill from this particular place and then we have another type of pipeline here you can see this pipeline is used to remove the leachate time to time period in time to time period and again it is decomposed or treated there so the treatment facility is there which is taking all the leachate from this place and that is treated continuously so that is also installed here linear that line which is provided here must be flexible membrane lining fml usually made up of a plastic fiber and rubber material so that is about the sanitary landfill or secured landfill so these kind of systems we have the next points under this landfill secured landfill that we have to cover here is plastic that we have to use that uh, impermeable layer that is made up of the pvc maybe polyvinyl chlorides high density polyethylene or chlorinated polyethylene so that all can be used the rubber that you can use there can be used that is the chlorosulfonate polyethylene ethylene polypropylene di in monomer epdm these are the two types of uh, unnatural rubber you can say which can be used in the secured or sanitary landfills leachate that accumulate above each linear or liner is collected in a series of drainage pipe and pump to surface for the treatment and treatment facilities present there that we have already seen and if you look at the stages of the decomposition of the landfills these include aerobic decomposition acidic decomposition unsteady methanogenesis and constant methanogenesis so it will start with the aerobic decomposition then it will go to the acidic stage it will go to the unsteady methanogenesis and then to the constant methanogenesis these stages are work like this this is the first stage that is the aerobic then other stages are anaerobic in nature this is the acidic stage this is the unsteady methanogenesis stage and last one is the constant methanogenesis stage so the phase 1 aerobic stage that you can see here 
in this particular section. This graph is representing the different amount of gases which is coming out from that particular landfill. And this is having the gas component in percentage of volume. So here you can see in the phase one, the release of the N2. Here, this is the release of N2. This is reducing continuously. And in this stage, the CO2 increase continuously. Then here in this phase, the because this is aerobic decomposition, immediately the oxygen, all oxygen present inside the landfill is continuously decreasing. Then we come to the second phase where acids are created. And because acids are created, that's why this phase is called as the acidic phase. So it increases the metal mobility. Why? Because in the, in the reduced pH or in the acidic condition, the metals like aluminum, iron, all are well mobile. It means these can move from one place to another place easily. It increases the metal mobility, it decreases the pH, and it increases the metal ion concentration in the leachate. And that leachate is again, leachate is again taken back to the surface and treated there. That is the phase two. Then coming to the phase three, in phase three, again, the carbon dioxide is reaching to its maximum value and then it will start reducing. And here, this is called as the unsteady methanogenesis, phase three. Why? Because the methane concentration, which is coming out from the pipe, is not constant. Here you can see it is slowly, slowly increasing. It is not like a huge jump. And here, this is variable. This is not fixed. The nitrogen amount he is here is almost negligible, including the hydrogen is also negligible. And here after this, you can see that we have the phase four, which is constant methanogenesis stage. We have the constant methane production now up to the 45 to 60%. And carbon dioxide is also fixed to 40 to 60%. And nitrogen we have on that up to the 2 to 5%. This is about the constant methanogenesis phase. So here you can see the CH3COH is converted into CH4 and CO2. This was the acid which was created in the phase two. Now this is decomposed and creating methane and carbon dioxide. The methane concentration is continuously increasing and the CO2 concentration is somewhat stable. The pH neutral, so metal ion decreases in the leachate in this state and mobility of the ion also decreases because the acid is now decomposing. So pH is coming to the neutral side. Then we have the phase four, which is methanogenesis. It means the constant methanogenesis. Methane releases from the landfill constantly with the concentration of 50 to 70 percent with this CO2 concentration of 30 to 50 percent. Apart from that, we have other gases into this also like ammonia, hydrogen sulfide, water vapor, hydrogen and volatile organic compounds. So the fermentation is a metabolic process that converts the sugars to gases alcohol acids in the presence of the acetogens. So this is the definition of fermentation. You have to remember this. This can be also asked because sometimes in the a case of decomposition of the solid waste, the fermentation also takes place. And this is apart from the landfill concept. Again, I'm saying this is not part of the landfill. This is just a note points that you have to remember. Another note point that you have to remember is residue can be used as a fertilizer purpose, which is stated in the case of composting, in the case of landfills, which is very rich in nitrogen and phosphorus. So this is the two points that you have to extra remember in the case of landfills. Fermentation also takes place in the landfill decomposition. That's why the definition of fermentation I have provided here. So there's a kind of metabolic process that converting the sugar material into the gaseous material, alcohol, or acids in the presence of the acetogens. Acetogens are the organisms which are creating these acids. So I hope the landfill concept is very, very clear to you now. So this is all about the landfill. Tomorrow we will start the recycling and reprocessing in the next lecture. So I hope today's lecture is clear to you. Meet you tomorrow with the new topic and by tomorrow we will end this minute easily.